Okay, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to the ordinary meeting of the Planning and Transportation Committee for September. So, as with before, this meeting will be held under the regulations allowing local authorities to meet formally using remote technology, and the meeting is being streamed and is available to view on our website. Uh, it's important for everyone participating in the meeting to please keep your microphones muted when you're not speaking to reduce any disruption from background noise. And throughout the meeting, councillors should have the chat window open as this would indicate or enable them to indicate when they wish to speak or if they have to leave the meeting. Uh, when your name is called, you will need to unmute your microphone and wait for the word live and the red line to appear around your screen and then please ensure you speak clearly. Most decisions tonight will be made by the general assent of the present, those present. However, if a vote is required, each councillor's name will be read out by the assistant town clerk and you'll be asked to state whether you are for, against or abstaining. Uh, if at any time the town council's technology fails, we need to adjourn the meeting for a short period. I will confirm this and ask everyone present to turn their microphone and their cameras off whilst the problem is rectified. And then I will confirm when the meeting is to resume. Obviously, we can only monitor the technology at our end and we cannot halt the meeting if a member of the press or public experiences technology issues. Uh, so I'll now ask the assistant town clerk to carry out the roll call to ensure that the councillors are present. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Buckland. Present. Councillor Chase. Present. Councillor Long. Present. Councillor Tandy. Present. Councillor Rhodes. And Councillor Turner. Present. Thanks. Thank you very much. So we begin the uh, substantive agenda. Item one is mobile phones. So as mentioned, if members can please ensure their mobile phones and other devices are switched to silent so they don't interrupt the meeting. Uh, apologies. I believe the assistant town clerk will confirm we have no apologies. There are none, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, item three is the declarations of interest. So the standing declarations as listed on the agenda are noted. Uh, if any other member needs to make a declaration of interest, uh, they can either make it now or at the appropriate item. And as there are none forthcoming, we will take it that any will be declared later. Uh, item four minutes. So the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of August 2020 have been circulated and are forming pages four to ten of the agenda pack. Can I ask that everyone is happy that they be approved? Agreed. Yes. Thank you very much and then obviously we will make arrangements for I will sign those hopefully someone this week and then we will record that in a minute. Item five is chairs report and urgent items of which there are none of either. There are none chair. Thank you. Uh, item six is the public forum so in accordance with the remote meetings protocol which has been adopted by the town council any members of the public wishing to address the town council or any of its committees during remote meetings should have emailed their submission to one day before the meeting, and I believe there are none. There are none, Chair. Lovely. So we come to uh, item seven, planning and other Aaron District Council matters, and 7.1 is the planning applications, and I will hand over to the Assistant Town Clerk to take us through them. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members will have uh, had details of the list and the opportunity to review the planning applications. So I'll start with the first application, which is on page 11 of your papers. Um, there's two applications for the same unit, which is uh, Block B in uh, Arndale Road. That's the Lineside Industrial Estate. And there are two applications for this particular site. Uh, the first is for uh, two non-illuminated fascia signs to be erected at the property. And the other is for the installation of three flues uh, into the property there. There aren't any comments on the website. Uh, open to members for comment, Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, any member wish to contribute, I will happily allow them to do so. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Chair. Um, the only thing I've got a comment about is that um, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I've, I've been unable to understand all the technical jargon that was used in the um, 
in the, the papers for the proposed how everything works and so on. So I have to be guided on whether they meet regulations and so on um, in terms of um, allowing it to go ahead. Um, so I have to be guided, I'm afraid. Thank you. Thank you. I would I would suggest I think probably that obviously a lot of the technical detail will be examined by environmental health and the relevant people there. So I, I suspect we're not being asked to comment on the detail of paint. I hope not. Thank you. <laughs> uh, beyond that, there is no one else. So I will, unless anyone wishes to raise any issues, I will propose that that's no objection unless anyone else wishes to disagree. Agreed, Chairman. Agreed, Chairman. Yep, happy with that. Agreed. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. That's those two applications and no objection, Chair. Thank you. The next application on your list, members, is a reference LU 21620PL, and that refers to uh, the property at Two Wick Parade in uh, Littlehampton. Uh, this has been uh, submitted previously so uh, that's the McColls news agent um, in the WIC parade um, which is currently vacant and this is a proposed change of use to a hot food takeaway and um, this time the application returns to us uh, with all the usual details and also includes um, a cash dispenser as well uh, as once uh, uh, no objection uh, recorded on the website uh, open it up to members chair Uh, Councillor Turner. There's no stopping me, is there? Um, I, I have no real objection to this at all. I'm just getting concerned about the number of fast food places that are now going to be on WIC Parade. I don't know whether anybody else is, has any concerns about that. It just worries me that there's more and more of these are converting to, to um, fast food and I was just getting a little bit anxious that perhaps we're going too far in one direction but other than that I've got no re real objections. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Long. Thank you Chairman. Um, yes I agree with, with Councillor Turner. I've, I've no particular concerns um, other than the flus and whether that's going to impact with any emissions um, because there are obviously residential units above all of these these units um, the ATM that's going to be installed um, my apologies if it's going to be external are they going to put bollards in front of it to stop um, what seems to be a, a fairly recent spate of um, ATMs being stolen through sort of ram raiding. Um, and I, I did notice also on the portal that there were concerns from a local resident about uh, refuse disposal. Thank you. If I may chair. Yeah. Um, those are items that will be looked at when it comes to uh, the planning application itself in terms of uh, the impact. Um, if members wish to, to comment that um, they would like to see specific items on there, I'm just checking um, what other items there might be with the application. Apparently there is already a, a condensing unit located um, to the rear of the building um, which will be retained and utilised. Um, there's no comment in terms of fumes, more to do with noise. Um, and there is a roof mounted extract flue um, which will be um, positioned uh, 2.6 metres from residential units and directed away from them. I'm sure the uh, planners will review that detail when they come to uh, assess the impact on the nearby neighbours, Chair. 
OK, uh, Councillor Buckland. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Long um, stole my thought process um, where the flus are concerned. However, um, I personally would like to see if, an, if the flus are going to be installed, that they run the length of the height of the building um, and to the top. Um, you know, whether, um, whether that's correct or not, I don't know if that can be done because at the end of the day, even if a flu is 2.6 metres away um, and directed, we all know where, you know, how the wind blows. Um, and, that, and also, do we actually know and understand what type of um, takeaway it's going to be? Because every single takeaway um, sends different smells out. Um, my other concern as well, and I will concur with Councillor Long, is the refuse collection. Now, for years and years and years, I know that Councillor North East and I have um, in the past have been on about the refuse collection out at the back of the buildings. It's still not 100% correct. There's still fly tipping and God knows and, and rubbish that's put out there and never collected. So um, totally concur with Councillor Long and I think it's a, a necessary point that we bring uh, this to the attention of the planners um, and that, that we have concerns over the refuse collection out the back because the neighbours that um, sit behind this block um, have complained to me over many years that things still aren't right but we as a council have tried to put it right. Um, we also, as you probably well know, Councillor Tandy, we've also had um, issues with the um, outside um, refuse which is supposed to come down that chute and because people abuse it, it gets blocked. So we've got a real, you know, um, refuse issue within that area um, and I think the whole thing needs to be addressed but maybe this is the time that we can maybe get the authorities to address it. Thank you Chairman. Thank you Councillor Buckland and then Councillor Chase. Yeah I agree with all the comments on the rubbish and the flues but I'd also just like to add that I'm pleased the cash point is being reinstated because there used to be one in the previous shop so I think that's a good good thing for the residents of the area. Uh, thank you so uh, I don't know if the assistant town clerk has anything or I will summarise. Um, no, if, if members want to make comments regarding those particular items uh, in, in their, as part of their response chair, that would be fine. Yeah, so uh, I've got refuse collection and possibly the, the question over the flu. Was yeah. there anything else people mentioned? I was trying to scribble as I went. I, if I may. Yeah. I, I did. Oh, the bollards, I remember now. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Jill. Thank you. Uh, so, sorry. Concerns about the number of fast food places that are now opening on Wick Parade. Yeah, so the uh, the concentration of one. One type. Each. Yeah, I think that might have been the basis of our last objection, if I remember. Yeah, I think so, yes. OK, so am I to take it the general assent of the committee is to object on the grounds that has been outlined? Agreed. I'll agree to that, Chairman. Yes, I agree too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that OK? Yeah, I have that chair. So that's uh, an objection on the grounds of the uh, potential adverse impacts on the residential immediacy of nearby properties in terms of um, the uh, positioning and um, extract flues uh, and rubbish collection and um, also in terms of uh, the cash dispenser you'd like to see bollards in place in front of it if the application is approved. OK, I can't hear anyone dissenting, so I think that is I think that is the general set of the, the meeting. Juliet, don't forget uh, about the fact that we are concerned about the number of fast food places. Oh, sorry, concentration of fast food outlets. Yeah. Forgive me, I have that chair. Thank you. Uh, is everyone happy to move on with that? Yep. Yep, perfect. Yes, that's fine.
Thank you, Chair. The next one on the list then is um, a rear extension and outbuilding with regards to the property at 34 Pier Road, uh, reference LU21720. Um, this is, um, as I said, an extension there. There are two objections lodged on the uh, planning portal at the moment, and they are concerned with the height of the chimney and uh, the effect of uh, smoke coming out of them when it comes to um, the neighbouring residences. Open it to the committee chair. Uh, thank you very much. Anyone wish to speak on Pier Road? Uh, Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I must admit, I, I'm concerned about the, the height of the chimney as well. I wasn't entirely sure what it was a chimney for, whether it's a, you know, the, the cooker or a wood, wood burner, um, but it just seems a very strange height. The previous drawing, I think, showed it better there. Um, it just seems strange. And I too, if I lived either side of uh, the property, would have concerns about those emissions. So I, I go along with those who've already objected. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Turner. I agree wholeheartedly with Councillor Long. I think the uh, the chimney is wholly inadequate for for. Uh, the, the area for what they they seem to want to do um, it would be the fumes would be going directly into into the houses in the area that are on the same level as the the top of the chimney it seems wholly inadequate for uh, for the area so I'm very much against that uh, thank you councillor Buckland thank you chairman Councillor Long's obviously on a typing mission to beat me every time this evening. Um, basically, um, I totally concur with Councillor Long and Councillor Turner. Um, I do not know where they come up with such a short chimney um, and, that, and it does need to be higher um, without a shadow of a doubt um, or relocated in another area of some kind, whichever whichever is possible, but um, totally concur. Um, I think it's you know totally wrong um, and needs to go back to the drawing board. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. There is no one else to speak, but I think the clear uh, assent or guidance of the committee is an objection. Agreed. Agreed. Agreed, Chairman. On the grounds of the height of the chimney is having an adverse impact. Yeah. Thank you, Chair, that's noted. Okay. Thank you. Chairman, uh, can I just uh, mention mention on that that um, it's to do with not so much the, the chimney, but it's the um, it's obviously the, the chimney and the uh, the fumes that are going to come with, from it again. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. That's noted. Thank you, Councillor Buckland. Um, we can move on to the next um, application on your list, which is on page 12. Uh, and again, there's two applications for the same property, and that's the Flintstone Centre in East Street. And those are reference LU21920 and LU21820. Um, the Flintstone Centre is a listed building, so it's a, a listed planning consent um, as well as consent for the general works. Uh, the application proposes um, the um, building of some new fencing and gates um, uh, around the perimeter of the current building there. Um, the details are on the website uh, and Emily's just shown them now in terms of what's proposed. Uh, there are no other comments on the website at the present time, so I open it up to members, Chair. Uh, Councillor Buckland first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman, I am in full favour of the um, removal of the current um, wired fencing. 
um, and that my only concern is that is that just is it black? Um, I can't enlarge it. So yeah. if it's as long as it's yeah. Um, my concern is obviously was the case of when they were talking about this um, was as long as we didn't get that nice silvery galvanized looking type fencing because obviously it is in a conservation area um, as it's black or whether it can be toned, you know, if any other part of it had would would need to be toned in um, to make it more aesthetically pleasing, then then so be it. But um, in full favour of the removal of the old wire um, fencing to improve the outlook of a, around the uh, Flintstone Centre and obviously for the safety of the children and those that use it. So thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Long, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm, I'm happy with the overall um, application. Just one very small concern is where the gates are going to be fitted, that there will be a loss of access to two parking spaces. And I wasn't sure how much of an impact that would have for users of the centre. Thank you. Uh, I don't know is the answer to that. No. Can we just come back with that, Chairman? Of course. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm going to think, I'm going to hopefully re, um, relay um, Council Long's fears. It's never had um, a full blown um, car parking issue. Um, normally, the extra cars that arrive there are normally for um, some kind of meeting. Other than that, during the day and in the evening, there are normally um, vacant car parking spaces because it actually goes right round the back as well as. Um, so it's a case of, yes, we might be losing two um, with the swing of the gates um, and where the gates may be being put, but overall, um, I don't think there would be much of a concern over the two losses. Like I say, the car parking um, does go up that side wall and and around the back. Um, so I don't think there'd be much, you know, and I say in the years I've known it, I've never known it to be jam packed. It's only normally used via the teachers that are teaching there during the day at the Peru. Um, and there's not a lot of them compared to other schools. Um, and then again in the evening when it's being used as a youth centre, youth club, whichever the case may be. So, yes, it's a concern, but I don't think it's an overall worry that, you know, they're going to lose two spaces. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Councillor Long, is that answer your question? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm, I'm much reassured. It's just whenever I see parking spaces being lost, I get very sensitive about it, wherever the location. So thank you for the up update, Councillor Buckland. Uh, on the on the basis that there's no one else to speak, am I to take it that there is no objection to the application? Agreed, Chairman. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Chair. That's no objection for both those applications there, being the listed consent and the ordinary planning. Um, the next item on members list is uh, reference 21 Bucksmead in WIC, and that is reference LU23220, uh, and that is for a two-storey side extension and alterations. Um, it's an end of terrace property, and again, there are no comments on the website at the moment. Any comments or questions on this application? Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, 
it's an interesting one. I was trying to clarify my own mind what was happening with the garage, whether it was being pulled forward or, or being left where it, it is currently. Um, looking at the plans, this is going to provide um, an additional bedroom upstairs and a study. Are the room sizes large enough? I think they should be. Um, is that the, oh that's the proposed plan, okay. Um, and it's, other than that, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's fine. It, it, although it seems a bit odd to have access to your garage through your dining area, but you can't really put it anywhere else. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think to answer your first question, yes, they are. I think the garage is coming forward is the plan. Uh, anyone else? I will take that as a no and I will uh, ask for no objection as the general assent. Agreed. Agreed, Chairman. Agreed. Thank yeah, happy with that. Thank you. Thank you, so no objection there. And the last one is on members supplementary lists, um, which again is in WIC and that's reference LU 220 stroke 20, and that's at 21 Hollis Chase, and that's a single story extension. So a fairly new application, so there aren't any comments on the website, Chair. Uh, Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have to say this, this looks rather nice. Um, it, it gives them a, a much larger dining area with the bifold um, doors out onto the garden with the roof lights and so on. Um, my only concern was whether it overshadows the neighbouring properties because it's coming out at the, the back of the building and obviously there are neighbours either side. That, uh, other than that, I think it's, it's actually a very nice plan. Thanks. Uh, thank you. No one else has indicated they wish to speak. So uh, again, I will put no objection to the general assent of the meeting. Agreed. Agreed, Chairman. Agreed. Thank you, everyone. And that concludes, I believe, the planning list. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Lovely. So we move on back to the agenda on to item uh, eight, which is West Sussex and other transportation matters, of which there are none. That's correct, Chair. And then we come to uh, Master Plan North Littlehampton. And I'll hand over to the Assistant Town Clerk. Just a brief update for members, Chair. Uh, we're expecting the next meeting of the steering group to take place sometime in early November. That's still to be confirmed. Uh, the other update for members is um, members may be aware, um, but just to state that the developer has started uh, publicising um, on their website and through their uh, newsletter for Hampton Park about um, the planned closure of the level crossing at Toddington Lane and the proposed pedestrian link from Hampton Park um, via Holly Drive to provide um, a pedestrian walkway there. Um, just to say that uh, the Town Council is awaiting detailed plans as it does impact on the proposed additional uh, allotment site there. So we are uh, monitoring that and awaiting further details. Um, and also just to state that um, there's going to be a further delay in the delivery of the allotments at uh, Worthing Road, which uh, the additional ones are now looking to be delivered in spring 2021. Um, we continue to monitor progress um, and we are in contact with the developer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, if no one has anything to say on master plan, that is uh, item 10 is exempt business of which there is none and so I will close the meeting at exactly seven o'clock and a thank you to all staff and uh, for their support throughout the meeting and to members of the public and press for attending. Have a good evening everyone.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Jules and everybody. Thank